If you're wondering whether or not you should update to the latest driver 537.42, then this video is for you because I'll be comparing it versus the previous driver 537.34 and my recommended driver before that 536.40. So sit down, strap in, let's go. Right guys, as mentioned in the intro of the video, I'll be comparing the latest driver 537.42 versus the previous driver 537.34 and then just to give context to my results, I'll test against my previous recommended driver, especially on GTX laptops or cards, 536.40. Uh, guys, but before I get to my results, if you are subscribed to the channel, please just head on over to my, my homepage and just make sure that you have the notification icon selected so that when I do, do drop a new video that you are notified instantaneously just to help me with that algorithm and then for those of you that aren't subscribed please consider subscribing at the end of the video if you find this content helpful and then when you do subscribe please just make sure that notification icon is selected so that you are notified and then for those of you that have not seen any of my content on my channel if you got a laptop and undervolting is locked I do have a couple of videos that will guide you on how to unlock undervolting um, and you can find that under optimizations and performance optimizations on my home page. But you're not here for that, you're here for uh, the driver comparison. So I will in the description of this video put a link to the GeForce Game Ready driver forum and then it just gives you complaints and some feedback on the latest driver. But I'm not even going to go into those complaints because I'm going to try to tell you the latest driver is trash. Um, just bear in mind, as mentioned earlier, I do test on a GTX 1650 laptop. It might be a good driver on RTX, I don't know. But on GTX, it's a trash driver. All my games are tested at medium settings with the exception of the newer titles. Um, most of the newer titles are on low because obviously it's quite heavy for my little laptop. Resident Evil 4 Remax on a mixture of medium, high and low. Hogwarts Legacy is on medium. Dead Space Remake is on low. Um, Remnant 2 is on low. Ratchet and Clank is on a mixture of low and lowest. And then Dead Island 2 is on medium. Everything else is medium with FSR 2.0 or 2.1 set to quality. Um, so guys, the previous driver Previously, I didn't recommend it, but after the latest set of Windows updates, lo and behold, 537.34, the driver from last week, actually performs best for me, and I've tested about six drivers in the last two days. Consistently, 537.34 has actually come out on tops. My previous recommended driver, 536.40, has taken a bit of a back step. Um, after the Windows updates, it actually doesn't perform as well. And why do I say this? 537.34 over the 30, I think it's 13 games that are benchmarked. Um, the average FPS totals is 892 and the 1% lows over those 13 games is 615. Um, 536.40, my previous recommended driver. Over those 13 games, the average FPS total is 889. And then over those 13 games, when I add up all the 1% lows, my 1% low total is 612. Uh, which is not, which is a bit of a back step after those updates. This used to be quite a good driver for me. And then the current driver is a bit of a mess. When I add up all the average FPSs over those 13 games, my total average FPS is 886. And then when I add up all the 1% lows over those 13 games, my total 1% lows is 606. So as you can see, from the latest driver, 600, no, the previous driver, 537.34, the 1% lows are 615. The previous, or oh, the current driver, the 1% lows are 606. And then my previous recommended driver, 536.40, after those windows updates, it's not looking good anymore. So guys, if you want my recommendation on the best driver for a GTX card or GTX laptop, I would recommend the driver that came out last week, 537.34. It's got pretty decent average FPS and it's got pretty decent 1% lows. Uh, the driver that came out today 
the the average FPS is down, the one percent lows are down, and it's not worth your time. Guys, uh, just furthermore, um, the latest drivers have been having an issue, uh, and I found a sort of a workaround for it. So if you're on a high-end system, you're probably gonna have uh, where is it? You're probably gonna have um, game mode. It's probably gonna be on, but your hardware accelerated GPU scheduling is gonna be off on high-end system. If you got a a medium to a low end system i recommend putting or having hardware accelerate the gpu scheduling on but then what i recommend is in your browser just go ahead and switch off um, it's going to be the same in chrome but obviously i've got opera so in your browser just go ahead and just find under settings just find a hardware accelerator GPU scale or hardware acceleration, switch it off there. In Discord, switch off hardware acceleration. In VLC Media Player, switch off hardware acceleration. In Steam, switch off hardware acceleration. It's just gonna give you a slight little bit of a boost in terms of performance. Because if you have it on in Windows and then also in other all these other apps, um, hardware acceleration actually cause a bit of input delay and it actually might even cause black screens in certain cases so guys the only place you should have a hardware accelerator gpu scheduling on is in windows settings uh, so where is it on the graphic settings switch it on yeah on a low end system it's good on a medium medium end system it's good on a high-end system, I don't recommend hardware accelerator to GPU scheduling, but this is the only place hardware acceleration should be used. Everywhere else, in Discord, VLC, Steam, and your browser, switch off hardware acceleration. Anyways, guys, thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to smash that like button. If you have any questions, please hit me up in the comment section. And furthermore, guys, if you're still watching and you haven't subscribed as of yet, now's the time to do so. Have a fantastic evening. It's people like you. Cheers.